Hey guys, this is Michael, and today I want to show you my latest project, which is a kind of experiment in, in some form of artificial intelligence. It's an evolution simulator for trees. The tree-like structures that you see here growing in the background, I didn't program them. They have evolved using some pretty simple rules. And my goal with this project was to see if I can could generate some patterns that, that we see in nature without programming. And I've kind of always been fascinated by, by evolution and genetics because it's a way of generating complex behavior and complex shape from, from very simple rules. It's like with fractals, you know, in math. You have some simple mathematical description and you can generate amazing beauty from that. And that's kind of a passion that I have. So, so why did I choose to do a project with trees? It's kind of random, but trees have a simple structure that's easy to map to a computer model and also it's pretty easy for for us humans to interpret what it uh, what they're doing. You can kind of see the branches and leaves and uh, how they work. It's there's no magic going on under the hood there. So when I realized that this would be easy to visualize and model, that's when I decided to start a project with trees. And uh, that visualization is really what this project is about to see if we can generate patterns that exist in nature. And I've realized more and more that biology and computing have a lot in common. I think biologists are learning more and more how complex the, the activation patterns of genes can be. It's almost like kind of software. And, um, you know, evolution created our brains, and we're kind of the most complex and intelligent entities that we know of. Well, most of us, at least. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, sorry, that's a long background. So, if you want to know how I, how I did this, uh, we have to start from scratch. Alright, so from the beginning, uh, this is this is what we have, just a, fee, a field of saplings. And um, these saplings start with a random genome uh, that you can see here. Now let me explain a little bit about the genome. Uh, usually when you think about an, uh, a genetic algorithm, you, you probably use some combinations of numbers or, or something to uh, uh, or some order of stuff that you want to to optimize and find a, a global uh, optimum for but here my goal isn't really to to optimize stuff I just want to generate <laughs> beautiful complexity and yeah um, so I chose to have generic, uh, complex mathematical expressions as my genes. Uh, this includes Boolean functions. So it's kind of like software in a way. And um, you can see some examples here. And the way it works is that for every iteration I run, every branch and every leaf of every tree makes an individual decision on its output variables. And an output variables, var variable can be things like, uh, do I create a new branch now or do I not? And if so, at what angle should it shoot up? And should I create a new leaf, or uh, sh how much energy should this specific branch uh, pick up of the total energy collected by the tree? Uh, so this happens for every branch and leaf, and every iteration of uh, of the simulation. Uh, so if we single step here, we can see how the trees decided on some different strategies because they have random genes so obviously they tried different things this one for example tried to grow a little bit thicker which was probably not a great idea at this point and this guy decided to grow a little bit higher from its random mathematical function which probably was not a very good thing to do either 
and uh, looking at the whole population. Uh, by the way, uh, all these uh, blue things, that means that the tree died. And it may have died for maybe consuming more energy than it picked up, or um, there are lots of reasons to die. Remember that these have a lot of bad mutations from the start, and uh, they will get weeded out pretty early. So um, we're going to see a lot of blue trees here. And uh, the trees also have to decide when to produce uh, their seeds. And uh, that's one of many output variables. And, uh, and input variables are things like uh, what kind of depth am I at? Am I a trunk or am I a little twig? Um, and um, or how many chil children do I have? Child branches, or how many leaves are on my branch? Things like that. And um, they also know how much uh, how much energy has the whole tree picked up, and uh, how old is the tree? How old is this branch? And this is uh, similar to to what we see in biology where where we have all sorts of chemical substances to to um, indicate to to the organism and every cell of the organism which kind of uh, state what kind of state it's in so uh, this is uh, this is much closer to biology i hope that than a, than a standard genetic algorithm uh, all right, so let's see what happens. And by the way, um, how do they uh, collect energy? That's that's one of the reasons also that I chose uh, to work with trees because I realized that photosynthesis would be uh, impossible to simulate in in three D programming um, using a form of ray tracing. So we start at the sun and create a projection, which looks like this. Uh, this is the sun from the side. And uh, we have a projection of the, of the trees. And uh, from this projection you can see the green leaves. And uh, uh, we can identify which tree each leaf belongs to. And uh, then we count the pixels and, and distribute energy to the trees that are showing themselves to, uh, or sorry, to the leaves that are showing themselves to the sun, and uh, we check many angles of the sun, uh, like this. So that's how they get their energy, and this uh, this makes um, makes for an interesting fitness function for the genetic algorithm. So. Um, yeah, and there are also other sorts of physical constraints, like this tree probably died because uh, the branch became too long compared to its width, so we simulate a broken branch. And uh, if the trunk breaks, the whole tree dies. So there are lots of ghost trees here. Let's see if it gets better after a while. We'll start playing again. And, and yeah, over here we collect the, the best surviving parents of the previous generation. Uh, this one has a pretty simple genome. Uh, mostly constants. And uh, over here, the, fir the first line over here is uh, from the previous generation, and the line here is from the, the all-time best course. So these trees are not doing very well yet. Um, so yeah, I run 50, 50 generations, uh, sorry, sorry, 50 iterations before we kill all the trees and move on to the next generation. And we collect seeds uh, proportionally to um, to uh, or sorry, the the seeds are uh, of the the parents chosen for spreading their seed 
is proportional to um, how much seed they manage to generate. And generating seed is, is an interesting uh, aspect because uh, the trees have to learn probably that it's much better to generate seed later in life when they have already invested in, in growth and uh, energy uptake and that sort of stuff. So we'll, we're going to leave these uh, little saplings here for a while and see if they are going to turn into something interesting. Right, we're back and uh, as you can see the uh, the population has started developing um, multiple leaves, which is kind of an important uh, development for a tree. It's kind of hard to survive in just one leaf collecting sunlight. And uh, wait, look over here, we have uh, some trees with lots of leaves here. And uh, a bit of branch structure. And yeah, that's how I forgot to mention that regarding the seeds. So the seeds spread um, slowly over uh, geographic distances on this map. So the closer the closer the tree is here, the more likely it is to be related to another tree. So genes spread slowly over this uh, 2D grid. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's leave this these guys alone for a while and see see uh, what they turn into. Uh, we can just check the genome, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna pause there, and uh, this one, for example, has um, let's see. How does it work? It somehow manages to produce multiple branches and multiple leaves. It's a bit strange. Its leaf, its angles are Boolean, which is probably not a very good idea, but it kind of works because angles are in radians here. Um, so zero and one. Are val valid angles and uh, uh, yeah, that's kind of the thing because these uh, you know it's kind of hard to in interpret how these genes actually work, and, and that's that's an interesting finding actually because evolution doesn't work doesn't think the way we do it just tries stuff that just happens to work. So, yeah, I'm gonna leave these guys alone for a while now, and we'll be back later. Alright, we're back here, and I'm just checking in again. Um, unfortunately, I had to, to start the simulation over because uh, it crashed because of a bug I haven't fixed yet. Uh, so, bye-bye old population. This is a new population that has tried some different strategies to uh, of how to be a tree. And we're seeing some interesting developments. Um, I especially like this kind of um, um, progressively decreasing width of branch because uh, that's a way, of, that's, that's almost a fractal pattern. And uh, it's a way to should be on its way to to how a real tree looks in terms of um, a branching structure because obviously you can't have thick branches all the way to the capillary branches that just that tree would just break so this is an important development uh, let's see if that stays in the gene pool um, seems to be already in a few trees but this could easily get lost because right now it doesn't look like they're actually using this adaptation very efficiently uh, and probably these guys that are spreading their leaves a lot more are going to 
fill the population in a while. Let's see, we'll check back later. Right, I'm back after 170 generations. And the all-time winner so far looks like this. Um, it's really focusing on spreading its leaves. Um, and it has some relatives here, I guess. So, yeah, all the mutations that we had for interesting branch structures. Um, looks like they've been largely lost because right here we have something interesting but yeah uh, and that's kind of something that just happens because those branches even though they were on a way to a much better global optimum than uh, these guys are they were they are not the most adaptive plants at this point these guys that are just spreading their energy can collecting light as much light as possible and producing seed these guys are are the winners at this point in evolution and uh, evolution doesn't know what the global optimum is. And that's kind of one of the most interesting problems that I've had uh, so far in this project is that evolution really likes to get stuck at local at the local optimum. And really evolution is not created to look for a global optimum. Evolution, the point of evolution is to adapt to uh, to conditions of a changing environment and uh, adapt slowly. It's not going to make a big random jump into something much better and that's just the way evolution works. The cool thing is that when we're not using a genetic algorithm but rather uh, a simulation of evolution we can change the problem Because if we change the environment for these plants, they will have to adapt to to new conditions, uh, and they will get away from their local optimum. And when we return the environmental conditions to what they were in the beginning, the trees have taken another path of evolution and they are going to adapt using the genome that they have accumulated under different conditions. And this is what makes uh, evolution uh, simulation interesting according to me. Uh, if, you leave, if you leave a bacteria in a pond for a billion years, it's not going to turn into a human. Rather, you have to subject it to all sorts of different conditions to cause it to adapt in various directions and, and, and accumulate complexity. And eventually, it's going to turn into something much more complex than if you just left it in that pond. And then um, that's that's kind of the the most profound realization uh, that this project has given me so far. So yeah, let's just continue running this. And um, the way I have uh, chosen to deal with this so far is that I vary the the angle of sunlight because it's a different thing living at the equator or. At a, at, the, at a pole. Sorry, not at a pole, but I mean at a higher latitude. Living at the North Pole is really difficult for a tree. But uh, different latitudes have sunlight coming from different angles. So 
at the equator, your best bet is probably to, to, to rise as high as you possibly can, you know, the rainforest trees, to compete for the sunlight that is coming from straight above. While at a higher latitude, your best bet is probably to to have a to spread your leaves a bit more instead of growing very very tall so with different sunlight angles and and a program that kind of simulates migration between latitudes you can get a different evolutionary evolutionary path than if you just left them in the same conditions and uh, that has uh, really helped in getting these trees off the ground so to say uh, if you can see here we are moving to a more equatorial latitude compared to what we started with so they are probably going to just want to spread out now and later hopefully we are going to see trees that are growing tall to compete for sunlight but at this point they don't actually have to compete very much and that's why they're not very interesting in growing tall or haven't uh, even found mutations for for interesting branching patterns. Right, so we're gonna leave them here now and see check back in a while. Alright, uh, checking in again. <laughs> this is just a confirmation of what I talked about earlier that uh, they have really found a local optimum here. And they're they're well, you're, you're, we're seeing other interesting uh, plant patterns, like uh, they've found angles that uh, try to not overlap um, with the leaves. Um, where the leaves uh, are... They're, they're trying to create as few leaves as possible to cover the circle around them. For, for optimal energy uptake and this is this is uh, I guess uh, a pattern of plant that you can see in nature um, but these trees or they're, they're not even trees because they've forgotten how to branch because it was much more efficient according to them to just stay on the ground and spread their leaves so this is exactly the reason I have created the, the kind of latitude program to to get them to compete for sunlight which they're not doing right now so these are probably not going to turn into trees for quite a while now unfortunately uh, but uh, we'll check back uh, to see what happens when we're at a more interesting latitude. All right. All right, we're back after another 1,000 generations. So quite some time has passed, as you can also see here in the structures of the trees. And um, at this point, I think I've kind of proved what I wanted to to see with this experiment that out of um, completely random functions and uh, physical constraints we've managed to evolve um, patterns that uh, that make sense that are kind of something like what you could see in nature and I think that's really cool um, and uh, can let him keep growing a little bit here uh, but uh, oops that's a big change in that tree uh, so they, they are still evolving because now they are no longer at uh, a strong local optimum now, so now they're kind of free to try all sorts of things because some things 
will be adaptive, some things will be not adaptive, but uh, the road to to improvement is is much easier when when it's not the case that pretty much every mutation you do screws everything up. So from here, I expect um, a lot of evolution to take place. But for our purposes here, it, this is this is kind of it. This is this is success according to me. Um, so yeah. Um, this is the state of, uh, of my program. Uh, for the future, I think um, I'm not sure. Maybe maybe I'll introduce uh, terrain and stuff like water usage and nutrients and and, and that kind of stuff. Maybe even start introducing other organisms like herbivores or, or, or stuff that can so it becomes sort of a life simulator but uh, yeah also I wanted to show you this uh, looking from above uh, it's kind of starting to look like like a real uh, shot of a forest from above so that's that's pretty cool that in many ways we're seeing patterns that actually exist in, in nature so I I'm happy for that and uh, also of course uh, I you know my, my laptop is sounding like an airplane right now because uh, this program uh, utilizes uh, the GPU quite a lot and all four cores of my MacBook so <laughs> it's pretty it's a it's hundred degrees centigrade uh, this computer uh, so yeah lots of optimizations that I could do to to push uh, generations through faster like uh, most of the time now is, is spent in in threads uh, regenerating all the vertices for every iteration uh, from the from the tree structures and that costs a lot of CPU time and lots of memory allocations and deallocations and stuff it's written in in, in uh, C++ or, or probably C slash C++ because it's a kind of ugly C++ uh, so that's uh, something I could work on if I if I find the time and uh, yeah, um, if you guys have some idea of what you, how, how this project could be continued, um, please just leave a comment, let me know, or whatever comment you have. Uh, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Alright, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm back again. I just left it on for, for a couple of hundred generations and, and then I realized an interesting pattern that I just wanted to show you. And it's this um, uh, spiral pattern that, that has kind of intrigued biologists, I think, for... Uh, or at least has been noticed by, by many people. And I I didn't teach these trees that, that spiral patterns are good in any way, but apparently um, evolution has taught them that a spiral, a spiral pattern is, is uh, adaptive. So that's what we're seeing, not only in the leaves, but also in the, in the branching patterns. And uh, I think that's really cool. And these uh, are beginning to look like I I'm not a biologist or, or botanist, so I have no idea what kind of species of tree this would be. But but I think it looks like actually uh, a tree <laughs> that that could exist. So I think that's fun to see. All right, thank you guys.